It's Max from the Max Creation. Welcome to this channel. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to this channel. Well, in today's video, we are going to look at a question. And how many hours do security guards work in Qatar? That is a very clear, uh, it's, it's a question that has been asked by very many people, especially when, when we're looking at security jobs, security companies, and we are looking at the working hours in Qatar. We may not not only look at working hours in Qatar, but we may also look at uh, working hours as a security guard. What are the working hours? What are you entitled to? Yes, before we go into details of what we need to know about the working hours of security guards in Qatar, this all starts from your home country as when you are given that job offer. Remember, when you are talking about that job offer that is being given to you, it will stipulate exactly what is going to be your role. Your role is going to be a security guard, and it was going to specify the hours. In some companies, they may say you may be working for 12 hours, all right? You may work, be working for 12 hours and you'll be getting one day off. That is part what the job offer will be. Then some companies will be like, they will tell you, you'll be working for eight hours, but four hours for overtime. That is another, another company we are looking at, another company. Then another company will be like, you are working 12 hours a day, and you are working six days a week. So all those are stipulations, those are all stipulations that are always made in what we call the contracts. That's why sometimes I keep on telling people, when you are looking at what we call contracts, when you are signing contracts, sometimes take your time to read through that contract. Never, never to be in the rush, not to be in rush. Take time and read through that contract. Because remember, when you get to read through that contract, it will just give you an insight of what exactly you are going to do. And what exactly the nature of the job or what you are going to do. It enables you also to get prepared for that job that you are going to do. Remember, some of people may talk about 12 hours, some will be like, I'll manage, I'll manage that one, that one is also okay. Because you are so much eager to get the job, right? You are so much eager that you've been waiting for so long for that visa or waiting for so long for that person to give you that offer. You start to offer that. But also take into account that you definitely know if you're talking about 12 hours, it should be this length of this much, and this is exactly because someone the companies definitely when you look at security guards, uh, especially when you go to security guard interview, they will definitely can you stand for so long? Can you stand for 12 hours? That is the question. They are not going to ask you, can you sit for 12 hours? No, the question will be, can you stand for 12 hours? And definitely, your answer will be yes. That is as interviewing you. So, definitely, after interviewing you and your answer for your answer to the reply of standing for 12 hours was yes then definitely they're going to send you a job offer and out of that job offer you definitely signed it to, to it at one moment of that if you're so lucky and you're taken to some location whereby uh, you definitely have to to work for eight hours uh, it is well and good or if you want to you have to work for nine hours well and good if you went to you are definitely deployed to some location whereby your working hours will be nine hours two hours of rest or one hours of rest then that is that is an added advantage that we call it it is an advantage it is an added advantage that comes on you, out of your disguise in one way or the other but when we look at in this scenario, let us try to look at the normal working hours as per the labor law or per the Qatar labor law. And those working hours are supposed to be eight hours. A normal working hours in Qatar are supposed to be hours, eight hours. The four hours are calculated as what you call overtime. But again, this draws you back to your contract. How many hours you see? That is why you find that most of the security guards' contracts are written on 12 hours. Because if they get to break them down, that 8 hours and 4 hours overtime, then it's going to be a fiasco in one way or the other. Remember, security guards will like you providing what you call a service. You're providing a service. At any time, they'll definitely need you to be around. They'll need you to be around. So, if they break those hours in 8 and 4 hours to make 12 hours, then you'll be like, these guys are stealing me. So that's why they make it a round figure and they say it's 12 hours. So if you're so lucky enough, you go to that location and it is, 
it is uh, it is nine hours or eight hours you are so lucky then you have to take it but what i have to let you know that the normal working hours in Qatar for all security guards is supposed to be 12 it is 12 hours 12 hours, 8 hours, and 4 hours of overtime. Over time. That is as per Qatar level. That is why when you see when the basic salary was introduced on 21st March, when they were trying to elevate the basic salary to 1,000, the basic salary was elevated to 1,000 according to the basic hours, which were 8 hours. Meaning that the 4 hours that are being worked are supposed to be over time. What does it mean? It definitely means that it definitely means that a week you're supposed to work 48 hours. That is per week. If we are taking it, uh, we are taking to a basic of eight hours, that means for the whole week you are supposed to work 48 hours. But as a security guard, most of the contracts that we sign, most of the contracts that you get to receive, or most of those job offers that we sign out of the hurry, out of uh, out of impatience that we've been waiting for so long, and I'm not going to blame anyone, even myself for the first time. Uh, I didn't know it. After I came into uh, uh, those deep laid locations that I had to stand for 12 hours and I, I was like, I got on my, my, my legs off for the pain. That's when I realized that, whoa, 12 hours is not a job. But it's supposed to be 12 hours of duty. So now, the rest of the things goes back to your company as you agreed, depending on the contract. If you say you, if you sign and it's supposed to be 12 hours, and you are working 13 hours, then you have a query for them to gain off. You have to complain, you have a query to complain in case you can, you have that opportunity to complain, you can complain it at, at it all. But if you sign 12 hours, then definitely that means it is 12 hours. Out of those 12 hours, they will calculate the basic, then they will get off the overtime. But it is all summary. They will, they, will, they will give you that amount of figure that that offer that is given to you, let's say the offer of 1,000 to 300 is given to you, is calculated as a whole sum of what we call 12 hours in security cards. That is what you need to know. Remember, when we are talking about security cards, we shall look, we, we also have not forget to talk about the good companies and the good and the bad companies. There are those companies that will follow the, 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 the law and those that will not follow the law. There are those that will say we shall we will be working for 12 hours strictly, and there are those that will say you not you you you'll be working 12 hours, but definitely you are working over 14 hours or you are working over 13 hours, and that is extra pay is not paid, or that overtime that will be calculated as overtime is not being paid because it is the company fault, it's not the company, it's not your company fault in any way or the other. So definitely. That is what you have to understand. And something that still you need to remember, or something that you need to know, it also depends on which kind of uh, which kind of project you are going to work in, or which kind of location you are being placed to work. There are uh, good, good locations whereby, yeah, your job description says 12 hours, they would post you there. But as we look at where you are going to work, those people are working 9 hours, meaning that you also work 9 hours, but it is not going to entitle you to move away from the location. You will still stay in the location and finish up the 12 hours because by the client, we have a client, client agreement is supposed to be 12 hours, meaning that if they work 12 hours, the remaining hours will be for you to sit down and relax and take on no more duty without a hassle or without too much pressure at yourself. So normally, what that is what I have to tell you. For, 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 when we for for the other side when we look at what we call the ladies the ladies must be some of them would be working what we call eight hours or nine hours depending for the ladies for the gender of the uh, the female is far different from the men in one way or the other and they're being considered they're, they're being considered with another half a hand at a time that's why you find some some in some situations in some cases you find that the men as security guards are earning more rationally more more than the women because the men are working more hours than the women who are working eight hours at that time so whoever is thinking of coming in the gulf countries or you're coming to the gulf countries 
you come in for these jobs. If you're coming to Qatar for the security jobs, uh, you may be a female security guard. Definitely, something that you need to know or what you need to cooperate with. Know that can your body withstand the 12 hours? Then definitely, that is it. That is the maximum that you should know. If you're a and you go to somewhere and it's, it's, it's less than that, then probably that is a good advantage for you. But make sure you are fit enough for you to stand what you call 12 hours because it is what what is the what is the what is the actually required hours for a security guard to stand in, in um, to stand for his duty or to work for his duty as according to most of the job offers that i've seen and according to most of the job contracts or job offers that have been given to people out of, even myself for the first time my job offer was telling me 12 hours until i had to come in the country and start to experience what they call 12 hours standing and luckily now for our nose, I was not even lucky at that time because where I was pressed, there was no seating, you only have to stand and just kind of imagine where you have to stand and you only have what you call one, you only have 30 minutes break out of the 12 hours. So meaning that you definitely working for standing for 11 hours, which is quite crazy, uh, tedious and uh, quite challenging one with the, uh, the other. But after some time, your body will get retarded, you get to use that in one way or the other. But as you sign in those contracts, Please make sure that you are signing and you are going to work for 12 hours. But per the catalog or per what you call the government job is supposed to be basic eight hours, then four is calculated as order or what you call overtime. Thank you so much for coming back to this channel. By the way, if it's your first time to come across this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell because it will be the very important for you to get updates whenever we upload any of video thank you so much see you again in the next video it's makes for the next